Minutes after they took I on the bottomless pit, but my hands was made strong by the hands of the Almighty. He forward in this generation triumphantly. Won't you help to sing? These songs of freedom, cause all I've ever had. Redemption song. I would like to start off today's segment with Miss Joanna Spencer. She is the CEO of Digicel Antigua and Bermuda, as well as Monserrat. Welcome, Joanna. All right, so good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for being here, and I want to thank Kira so much for having me here today. Just a brief introduction about myself. My name is Joanna Spencer, as she said, the current CEO of Digicel Antigua and Barbuda in Montserrat. Uh, my background is really from finance. I have a BA in accounting and finance, and I'm also a member of the Association of Certified Chartered Accountants. I also have a small business called Let's Paint, and Ant Let's Paint Antigua, which has been around for about four years now. I'm an active member of the Rotary Club of Antigua, current secretary and president elect. Uh, my background outside of telecoms, I've had experience in telecommunications and hotel industry. Um, I became the CEO in June 2020 in the peak of a pandemic. Today, I'm going to share just a brief um, snapshot of my journey, um, a little bit about success and some tips, and also how it feels to be a woman in a leadership role and in a telecommunications company. So just about my journey, I, as I indicated, I did accounting and finance in university. I came back to Antigua and I told myself, I am not going to work in any organization that is not aligned with what I've studied or what I enjoy. So my first job was in a hotel. I worked as an accountant and I stayed there for two years. Later, I moved back to the UK where I did my degree initially and I decided to pursue ACCA. I came at Santiago in about um, October 2010. And again, I was on the quest I want to give back to my community and I want to do something either in accounting or finance. I was unemployed for nine months because I could not find a job anywhere. I eventually saw an ad in Digicel, um, the newspaper for Digicel and I grabbed it and I was successful and I started as an assistant finance manager. Within a few months, I got an opportunity to move to Anguilla to pursue a finance manager role, and I ran with it. I was young, vibrant, wanted a new opportunity, and it was an amazing experience. And I think Anguilla is really where rooted my love for Digicel and really where I found my passion for excellence. I would have then um, stayed in Anguilla for about three years. An opportunity would have came up in Antigua, and I returned back home as the financial controller in Antigua and Barbuda and also for Montserrat. I did that for two years and then another change came about two years later. I think two years was like my lucky number or something. Every two years, something different would have happened. And my company at the time made some bold moves in terms of the organization structure and relocated my entire department um, to St. Lucia. I think this was the most devastating point in my life. Not because St. Lucia is not a nice place to live, I just felt like I was at the stage where I wanted to be a bit grounded. I wanted to be back home after traveling for so many years in another company, in, a, in another region. And it was like a shock. And it was like, if you don't go, then you don't have a job. So I said, okay, Joanna, I'm gonna give this one year. And after one year, that's it. You're gonna come back home and you're gonna find something to do. I started to think about, okay, I wanted to get into real estate. All sorts of things crossed my mind. Nevertheless, 18 months later, I was back in Antigua. Thank you, God. <laughs> I came back to my old role and it was, it was different. It was good to be back home. Six months into that, 
I got another opportunity. Um, we needed a regional CFO when they asked me, okay, can you do this for the interim? I jumped to it. It was something that I always said I did not want to do because I felt when you become a regional CFO, you have to go to the board. And I was afraid of going to the board. Nevertheless, I said, you know what? I'm already doing the job. Why not? So I did that. And then fast forward to April 2020, um, again, some more changes. And I was asked to do an interim CEO role until the new CEO joined. Three months later, I was confirmed into the CEO role. And that has been my journey to date. And it is a very exciting one. And I just want to say, never limit yourself. Never think you can't do something. Never think anything is not attainable. I never aspired to do CEO. My, my aim was, okay, I can be a regional CFO. I thought that was the highest in my career. But sometimes you have to just trust the process, know that you, know, you are making an impact and someone sees something in you that's greater. I want to talk to you about success and what it means to me. For me, success is growth. It is seeing where I started from to where I am now. It is achieving the goals that you've set for yourself over a period. And it's not just about achieving them, it's about surpassing them. Um, you know, you really feel some level of, huh, this is really good. Success is when you've left an impact or legacy in whatever you've done. It is knowing or understanding how to complete the different pieces of the puzzle, even though the puzzle is not being done by you or managed by you. One of the things that I've learned, so I, when I became the CEO, I always heard the retail team complaining of how hard it was. And I'm thinking, how hard it could it be? And I decided, you know what? I'm going to go and be a retail agent for the day. And trust me, from that experience, I have great appreciation to the retail team. So unless you understand what is involved, it is very hard to say you, you know. Success is also for me bringing people along on the journey and having them to accomplish things that they are also proud of. It is passing of knowledge. I am a sharer. I want everybody to know how it's done. I want to keep people in the loop and I want people to be able to grow. I feel like if I'm not here, the business should continue without me. So for me, success is that. It's also taking a bad situation and turning it around. It is getting paid for what you love so it becomes effortless. It is growth, continuous improvement, and continuous accomplishments. That is what it means to me. Some tips that I want to share is one, if you're being assigned with a task, a job, a goal, whatever the case is, always ensure it's something you believe in and trust and have confidence that it's something that you can actually get done or want to be a part of or love. If you do not, you will not have enthusiasm, you will not have determination, there'll be no passion. And I think more than likely you're going to fail. Do not measure success by what other people deem success to be. Have your own parameters. I think you should celebrate your wins. People may not celebrate you, but it doesn't mean you have not been successful. Celebrate yourself. Always be authentic. Always re-evaluate your journey. The plan to achieve the goal changes sometimes with the circumstances. We never thought COVID would have happened. We never thought that businesses would be in the position they are, but you know, to be successful, you just have to roll with the time and re-strategize. Always be authentic. Always re-evaluate your journey. Don't be afraid to start over or shift focus. Don't be afraid to abandon your goals. Something else will happen for you that is going to be great. Believe in yourself. Do not doubt yourself. I know it's hard to say that, but it, we do doubt ourselves all the time. But just believe in yourself. Another thing that I've learned is it is very, very lonely at the top, but have faith. Know also that you cannot do it all. And the people that are around you, your team, they are your most valuable assets and you should appreciate them. Also, not everyone will agree with your decisions you make, but ensure the decision that you've made, you've justified it in your heart and mind, and you think you made the best choice. Never let anyone tell you you can't and not everyone will like you support you but many will just keep going i want to speak lastly on my challenges being a female ceo in the telecoms industry and being a ceo in a leadership a, a female in a leadership role to be quite honest i think the journey has been challenging it is not so about whether you're male or female I think especially in my company, Digicel, um, the company embraces women a lot. 
as you can see, I have two other female um, colleagues next to us on this panel, and there are two more. And in other markets, there are quite a few females. So I never see it as being a challenge per se. I think being a female has actually benefited me in many ways, especially where external relations are concerned. I think when I joined as a CEO, the males supported me 150%. What my challenge was more, it was around my age. I'm 36 and, you know, they say, oh, this little girl. And, you know, to me, that was a bigger challenge than even being a female. But I think with the knowledge that I've learned over the years, I'm well grounded. So one challenge I can say being in this industry, being a female is perhaps um, telecommunications network is more so a male dominated field and perhaps my weakest link. Uh, I come from a background of being a finance person. So here's where I really rely on the expertise and competent staff of my team members. So my technical manager is my best friend and Sayo is my best friend because Sayo comes from a technical background. So I really have to leverage off the trust for people that are, have been appointed in a particular role to really guide me. Women in leadership roles, I think, tend to have to deal with a lot of emotions um, versus perhaps what a male would have to go through. And sometimes I find myself having to explain myself a little bit more, prove to myself for some sort of acceptance or buy-in. So to me, that is my only real challenge, but I do think the world is changing. There are lots more females in leadership roles, and I just want to encourage any woman that, you know, they want to take up the mantle in being a leader in any organization, go for it. Don't look at gender as an issue. Um, some of the things I'd like to leave persons with in terms of overcoming challenges and some things I learned for myself is one, don't focus on negatives, just use them as an opportunity to improve. Personally, for me, I like constructive criticism because if you're not told where the problem is, you could not improve. So for me, I like to share, I like to give feedback, I like to improve. Another thing I'd say, be true to yourself, stay focused, always be on guard. Take all opportunities to learn any and everything. Stick to your word, be an example. Accept that not everyone will support you, like, or even care for you. There are other people that do, and in the end, people will understand. And the most important thing is the buck lies with you as the CEO or any leader in an organization. Thank you very much. And I hope my words have been of value to people that are listening. And I look forward to the other presentations. Next up, we have Siobhan James Alexander. She is the former CEO of Digicel St. Lucia. She will be you know, shedding light on that transition. Hi, Sayo. Hi, Kira. Thank you, everyone. Good afternoon, and thanks for joining us. Um, my colleague, Joanna, has, has set the bar. <laughs> um, I just, let me just give you a short background. You can change the screen, um, Shania. I am Siobhan James Alexander. And as it said, I am the former CEO of Digicel St. Lucia. Um, and I will give you exactly what that journey looks like. And, you know, as you can see on the screen, um, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And that's been my mantra from day number one. It remains my mantra now. Um, it's what I get guided by. And like, like Joanna, I've had a journey um, in Digicel and I've broken my life into three phases. And I do hope that, that you know, some of what, what I share with you today um, helps guide you. And I think the first thing and the first phase of my journey, um, next slide, is phase one. And I am an engineer by profession. And you'd learn a lot more about me as you go through this. Um, I went to school in Toronto and I came back home. And the sole purpose of coming back home was to be able to give back. And engineering is a very much male dominated field. And so from day number one, I have had my tasks, my struggles. I joined Digicel in 2008 as a computer systems engineer. Um, I was in government before that. And I came to Digicel because I had a tele, I, I wanted to do telecoms. I wanted to be an engineer. And a lot of my choice of being an engineer is that I wanted to, to build things and I was more of an introvert. So a lot of this is very different from my actual true self. Um, I've learned to 
be able to overcome those hurdles during my journey. So phase one was me as the engineer walking into Digicel and working for four markets, St. Lucia, St. Vincent, Grenada, and Dominica. And I was one female out of a team of 26. And that was a little bit intimidating, but school is also intimidating because I was probably 15 out of a 150 that actually graduated as an electrical engineer. And so next slide. For me, journey number one, my phase was that of that engineer. And the road here is never ever straight. And I learned over time as the engineer is that after every fall, I rise and never be apologetic for who you were and why you were there. You know, there were a few things that within that time, and I spent about three years in technical and I learned and I grew. And I realized that falling wasn't a measure of failure. It was actually the lesson that you learned out of it that was the key success. And that you had to try, try again. And that not because you were female, you were any less of a person. Lucky for me, my team, my male colleagues accepted and, and they were very much part, they allowed me to be part of a team. And I know that's not everybody's journey. I was probably lucky in that regard, but I became unapologetically style. So my colleagues here will tell you that I have a tendency of being myself first. I don't know how to be anybody different. And so I would say it as it is. I've learned, however, within that journey to couch my words, not necessarily change what I want to say, but it's not what you say is how you say it. Sometimes my face tells the story, but you know, you need to be able to keep your voice and you have to let it be heard. And your true strength is in feeling and thinking. And I'll tell you a story as you go through this story, each of those little graphics that you see is actually a tattoo that I have done over time. So I have a few tattoos. Yes, it's okay to tattoo yourself if you are with that. That's how I spoke to myself. And I learned during time that my gut never lied to me. I call it my sixth sense. And I trusted it. And so every time I needed to, I was probably my biggest critique as well, right? But maybe my biggest cheerleader as well. And so I took a leap of faith after three years in technical. I, I evaluated and yes, I wanted to be an engineer, but I felt like I was hitting a ceiling and that I needed to grow. And whereas I'd never taken a business course in my life, an opportunity came for me to move to products and products was a bridge between technical and commercial. I knew nothing about being commercial, but I moved. So phase two was the commercial, the operations, and therefore getting into CEO. It was probably my biggest leap of faith. Well, my first leap of faith. And I remember having that conversation with my mom and she said, you have never done a, a business course in your life. And I said, mommy, worry not, I'm good. And so that was journey number one. And phase number two was I needed to be agile hey. and I needed to be able to change. So that agility came and that balance came. And people normally talk about whenever it's a female, they're asking us for work-life balance. It's a myth, I've discovered that. Everybody has a different balance, but you have to be able to respect yourself. Think of you. And it's not being selfish. Sometimes you have to shift your priorities and learn that everything is in your time. You can't necessarily look at somebody else's path and think that's exactly what you're going to take. You may end up the same place, but the road may be very different. But there are a few things I learned as I transitioned from being an engineer into commercial and in three years into Two years into products, I moved to operations. And one year after being in operations, I moved as CEO for St. Lucia. I'm six years now as CEO for St. Lucia. And that was probably my second leap of faith. I remember one of my friends who was deceased now when I was going to take the role. Um, I felt like I wasn't ready. And that's half of what we as women do. We try to get 100%, whereas a man will take a job at 70%. But I learned that I wasn't assertive. I wasn't, I wasn't being bossy. I wasn't being anything. I was just being me. And it's okay to be assertive. It's okay to be forceful. You'll get accused of a lot of things. But don't back down as long as it's your truth. Again, it's not what you say. It's how you say it. And there are price. There is a price to the steps that you take. Don't feel guilty. 
it's, you know, lot, lots of time for people would ask me, why haven't you had a second child? I have one son. Um, it's a choice. And don't be apologetic because you've made choices in life. I've been very thankful that I have a very good support system. But your success is your success. It's your family's success. You do not owe anyone that kind of explanation of the why and the why not. The only person that you owe is yourself and your family. Find your balance. And your greatest strength and my greatest strength has been my resilience. So getting into that CEO role, I've, I've managed to build a network and I've learned that your strongest link is your network. So it's not like I ever wanted to take over the world. You get accused of that a lot of times when you think that people think that you're being bossy. There's a role for men and there's a role for women and there's a place for all of us. What we always ask for is equality and that's what you learn. And that was my agility and my balance that I had to learn as an individual. I couldn't ask for that. And so I moved from agility to starting to find my inner self and understanding that my dreams were probably not necessarily four years in, I started to ask myself, is this it? Because, you know, I, I didn't plan to be a CEO. It came as a part of the journey. So started to ask, what's next? my dreams, my, my ambitions, were they aligning? Had I accomplished everything that I wanted to, was there more? So there were things that I wanted to do as a CEO and your team, your team supports you. And I had a very, very, very good team and they supported me along the way. So there were key things. And when we rolled out LT in St. Lucia, I could have done backflips. Um, and, and it was probably one of my proudest, proudest moments in digital, but I had to start to look deeper in because there was still a gap and I was still asking questions to myself as, have I reached my goal? Is this it? And so there was that inner internal ambition and that internal want. And so OM for me was the lesson along the way of internal versus external and that battle and that comfort of what's next, Siobhan, there's always what's next. And it's okay. And you're not restless, you're transforming. So about a year ago, I tattooed a dragonfly on me. And if you know what a dragonfly means, it's change. And I was changing and I was transforming. And there were things that I had to understand. And, and it's things that all of us need to, as persons, accept as well. So overcome your hardships. And transformation is inevitable, but you adapt. And change is inevitable. The only thing constant is change, right? But you choose your power, you tap into your power. Mine is my resilience. It's that internal want of doing something different and being able to achieve. And in a very male dominated, and Digicel has done a wonderful job of increasing that balance of power. We have a lot more female um, CEOs than when I joined. When I joined, I was one of five. And when I left a week ago, actually, um, my whole region were female. CEOs. That was extremely proud. And, and Digicel has done a really good job of that. But your internal self is what you always deal with. That power, that transformation is definitely in you. So my lesson from this one, from phase number two was what's in it for you? What's next? And so I learned to breathe because in a telecommunications company, we work 24 hours a day seven days a week without fail. And sometimes it was, we were like on a treadmill. I felt like I was on a treadmill sometimes. And to be strategic, you need to be able to stop and think. My engineering brain always kicks in and the logic has to be there. And so sometimes you just need to stop, take a step back and breathe. And your best decisions come when you're breathing, not when you're in flight when you're breathing and when you stop and stopping doesn't mean that you're stagnant stopping is you you're cognizant of what your body is telling you you're cognizant that you're probably moving too fast your brain is working at one speed and your body is at another so I learned to breathe and it was a very hard thing and I think COVID probably made it 10 times harder to breathe when COVID happened 
it hit us like storm. And it's not because we didn't see it coming. It was just that transformation that was required and that connection day in, day out, looking at what's next and worrying about your team and worrying about what's going on. But COVID also for me, this phase three, I stopped and I breathed. And phase three was my transition. So in August of this year, I decided that maybe I had run my mile and run my journey in Digicel. So in August this year, I decided what's next. And I have taken my third leap of faith. So it was no overcoming the adversity and jumping and taking definitely a leap of faith. As of November 2nd, I actually moved into a new role in the medical field, quite different. I have never studied medicine in my life, <laughs> but I am a CEO. You take some key things with you and don't be afraid, people will question you. I am now CEO of a medical complex, but why is that different and what's the, what's the lesson here? Maybe you think I'm mad, no. There are a few things that you learn in life when you reach that stage. There are a few things that nobody can take away from you, it's you. Everything is about business. Everything is about strategy, regardless of your field. You have logic. There are logical steps. You have technocrats. You can't do it all. You have a team. You build your team. You trust your team. You build your network. And so as long as you're moving with that, then you're taking a leap of faith. And yes, you can. And so I always have that conversation with my mom and my dad. And I had that conversation. And I was waiting for them to say, child, you are mad as hell. And my father the conservative one, the accountant, Joe will understand, said, go ahead. And I looked at him, I said, daddy, did you hear what I said? And he said, yes, go ahead. It's also about that comfort of knowing that you have a support system around you. But in the face of adversity, you move and you jump and you know that you're going to land on your two feet. I will land on my two feet. I'm confident of that. Why? Because I know myself and I know that I am capable I don't think that I know it all. I will lean in on the technocrats. My sole job is to keep things together, keep things moving. And that's, once you know that and you are comfortable with yourself, then you keep moving. So I often used to tell my team, and I'll leave with you, keep your head down, keep moving. Don't listen to the noise and the drama, keep moving. Don't think, and when your gut's saying different, you just keep saying, I can. And so this is my new beginning. I'm a unapologetically style. And you should be unapologetically you. And as long as your gut says go, keep going, keep moving, you'll succeed. I hope my story has inspired a few of you. Thank you. You've broken down and tired A little life on a merry-go-round and you can't find a fighter, but I see it in you, so we gon' walk it out and move mountains. We gon' walk it out and move mountains. And I rise up, I rise like the day, I rise up. I rise unafraid, I rise up, and I'll do it a thousand times again. And I rise up, high like the waves, I rise up, in spite of the ache, I rise up, and I'll do it a thousand times again.
and our eyes up, our eyes like a day, our eyes up, our eyes on fray, our eyes up, and I'll do it a thousand times again. For you, for you. that I would give to the ladies are to be unapologetically yourself at all times. Um, don't worry about, you know, if people think you're different or they might judge you because, you know, of your background, where you come from, how you grew up, just be yourself. Um, and when I say these things, I could speak from this from experience because I have been you know told by people you know you, you, you're a little rough around the edges you talk um too trini you talk too bakayad you know you, 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 you you're not like the template of how a female artist should be certain things you know how, how you speak is a problem and i never let those things deter me because i know genuinely deep down i was just being myself i wasn't trying to put on a show or to pretend to be somebody else, I was being me. So within being me, I think um, people eventually saw that, you know, I'm, I'm relatable, you know, and that's the thing, when you're, when you're authentically yourself, there are people out there who could relate to you, believe it or not, there are people out there who will watch you do something or say something and say, wait, she just like me. So don't ever stop being unapologetically yourself, and always keep it um a hundred percent you know real and authentic of course you know um there are ladies that like to carry themselves a certain way and that's cool as well but don't feel like you need to change yourself to fit into to the expectations of others that's the advice i would give to the ladies awesome i see the ladies are in the chat someone said there is only one you, takes too much energy to wear a mask and be you. That's right. A lot of others are saying well said and facts, endorsing the statement. Now, do you want to, I see this new do, so the Ross is, is gone. So do you want to tell us a little bit about this transition? Um, well, I think, you know, with, with like, if it have ladies on the on the chat, I'm sure you all can relate that. As ladies, sometimes you feel for a change, you feel for uh, something new, and and that's just humans in general. We like change, we like to evolve. So I just felt like you know that was tied into the the first part of Nessa Preppy that everybody know. You know you, the girl with the locks and all of that. But now I feel like I'm transitioning into a whole nother version of myself so i think the change was needed and after eight years of having locks you know it kind of 
I, I wanted to see myself look different. So I just wanted to change. Okay, well, we, I would say that you look amazing. And based on the responses in the group, everyone is saying that they're loving the new hairdo. Um, I guess before you go, do you want to tell us one thing that maybe no one knows about you? So something that maybe your fans don't know, um, just tell us something about Nessa that, you know, we would never have thought of. Um, I think, I think I, I'm an open book at this point. So I don't think I have any secrets or anything that, that anybody doesn't know. I mean, one of the things that people may not know is that right now, um, my album is coming out and it is going to have a lot of R&B influence on it. So I think that is something that people don't know yet. Okay. That's awesome. And when is that album dropping? Early December. Okay, nice. Well, ladies, you've heard it from Miss Nessa Puppy. So a lot of people are saying congrats, evolving into another beautiful butterfly. Love the hairdo, change is good. <laughs> yeah, so thank you so much for sharing those words. Would you like to, you know, give us a, a verse of something? You leave the ladies with a little, a little juice. Hey, splash. Body wet up, wet gal, where the man them prefer. Drip drop when you wine and bubble. Body wet like river, baby. Every time I see me, I blossom in looking dreamy. I bet you see in this steam day. And it's walk, I walk in my tail. Hey, splash, body wet up. <laughs> Let me introduce you to Ms. Trevon Redhead. She is the CEO of Digital Grenada. Give her a round of applause. She can see everyone. Hi, everybody. First of all, I just want to say thanks to Kira for even allowing me to be part of this wonderful platform. And the fact that we have so many women on celebrating the greatness of women and the fantastic abilities of the fellow CEOs involved it's amazing in itself, yeah? So Kira, just keep allowing the channels for empowering females, because that's what we need. We need the persons that are gonna bring us to the next level. Um, so as Kira mentioned, I'm currently the CEO of Digital Granito, and I opted to not have all the accolades in there because there's quite a bit of stuff. And to me personally, I think pe persons find it a bit intimidating when they see things like masters and bachelors and, degrees and whatever it is and border this and whatnot. And before I continue talking, let me just advise you guys that I don't fit into the typical cliche of how CEOs behave. Um, so I would tell you that I'm a bit of a rebel and I don't apologize for that. Yeah, so um, probably next slide, Shania, and we could start the conversation. So I am a very easily distracted person. And I think that's how my path goes. So typically in school days, they'll have your career days, everybody in my school in each form knew exactly what they wanted to be. So persons came just as police officers, doctors, whatever it was. For the five years of secondary school, my answer was always the same. I don't know what I want to do. I enjoyed school. I love business subjects. I hated science. I hated math. So I hope that is giving comfort to some people on the on the on this call right now. But it never there wasn't a particular career that stood out to me to say that I wanted to achieve this specific qualification to move into this line. And it might be surprising to persons on right now, but even to this day, I still do not know what I want to be. What I do know is that I always want to be able to help people. And since that was my underlying passion for life in general, it was easy for me to move into roles, multiple roles, started off as a call center agent actually, taking customer calls with their queries, then spent a couple of years doing that, and then moved on to being the company trainer after a series of promotions that was at a call center in Grenada. And then I moved on uh, as soon as I heard Digicel was in town and they're willing to employ people to move to St. Lucia to live. 
without hesitation, I was like, oh, that sounds like fun. Let me move to another country and see how that goes. Um, so I lived in St. Lucia for a little bit, worked in Digital St. Lucia for a bit. And when they launched in Grenada, then I moved back to eventually into a similar role of customer care, then moved on to, I believe it was customer care team leader, then customer care manager, got into products, thought I wanted to be an accountant for a very brief period of my life. And then I realized the monotony of it all. And it was just not for creative spirit as me. <laughs> so I spent probably about a year in finance, um, assistant finance, and that was enough to drive me crazy. So that didn't happen. Then I moved back into the creative side of the business with product development. I was uh, the commercial manager for a period of time. And similar to Sayo, I uh, moved into operations and then into the serial role. And I've been here for the past two and a half, almost three years. And I love my job. I love what I do is what I should say. Not necessarily the job, but I love my staff. I love interacting with people. I love the ability to meet um, new persons and just have this entire platform where I can reach out to persons and give them an avenue to voice their concerns. And then of course, how do I meet them? Now through all of this wonderful movement, there's been, and I'm giving you guys context so we understand clearly, there isn't a mold, there isn't a cliche, there isn't a direction sheet of what a CEO need to look like. So throughout the last, let's see, 20 years, let's see what has been milestones for me. Got married at 21, got divorced at 30. That was a really awesome milestone, by the way, for any divorcees in the group. Let's applaud that. Um, then I had my son, he's now five. Um, and those were the most interesting things in terms of life-changing things that I've experienced. So the summary of it all is life is fluid, enjoy it. Your passion doesn't necessarily need to be aligned with a career goal, but you need to understand how you're going to give back to the universe, how you're going to help your neighbor, and how you're going to empower the next person. That's what we should be preoccupying our time with. And through all that activity, I also started my company. So it's CEO, business owner, board of directors, long listing. And GEM Consultancy is the name of my company. And it speaks to exactly what my passion is, helping people training and development within corporations or non-corporate environment. Uh, a, lots of, a lot of nonprofit and voluntary work, but it gives me joy, so I'm not complaining. Next slide. So <clears throat> I think it was Joanna that mentioned, you know, uh, when she started off in terms of the level of support or the lack of support. And Sai, on the other hand, had a, a different experience where there was a proper support system in place. Now, for me, what's important is that you, the individual, have to be comfortable with what you believe in, yeah? And the barriers we speak of here, it has nothing to do with physical barriers or I had a boss interview me once uh, probably it was like six, seven years ago. I was interviewing for not an executive role, it was a managerial role. And I sat with him and he told me that I am not ready. You're not ready to be a manager. You, you're not qualified. You don't have the experience. And if anybody knows Siobhan and the rebel that exists within her, knows for me are driving forces to motivate me. And you guys see me sitting up straight when I speak because I'm a super passionate person, but I love when someone tells me no. Unfortunately, my son has that same 
characteristic built into him. I think he got it from his dad, definitely not me. <laughs> but I love when I get no's. It means one of two things. I need to take some time, do some homework to better prepare. Or that person is, um, Kara, are you allowed to curse on this? What's the age range on this? Eighteen and over. Okay, great. All right, so I'll keep this off. So it either means that you need to you need to personally prepare more. Put it in the group chat, you know. So technically, I didn't read. <laughs> or it just means that someone is not ready to buy into your dream, and that's okay. You won't get the world to come along with you too. And Sayo actually did a pretty good job of saying it, you know. Um, not every time you will have the support and that's okay. And that's why it comes back to you to knowing that you're on the right path. Yeah, it's important as an individual for you to know that whatever you're passionate about, it's important to you. You have to find that focus, dismiss the naysayers and drive on. Yeah, um, similar to Sayo, Sai and I have a history, guys, so I'll make reference to all the time. We worked in products together, we worked in commercial together, we went through operations together. And she was probably one of the biggest supporters when I was appointed, um, eager for me to just destroy things, as we say. <laughs> so um, similar to Sai, I express myself through body art. So I have 13 tattoos and proud of each one of them. Uh, the seven chakras go down my spine. I have uh, live, love, laugh, which is what I'm always doing on my arm. My son on this arm, uh, Arabic says blessed on, there's a lot, yeah? And that's just how I think I express either my pain, my passion, a moment that I want to cement um, and I'm not saying please for the 18 year olds on the, on the chat, please. I'm not saying get tattoos. That's not what I'm saying, my disclaimer. What I'm saying is just be comfortable to be who you are. Most persons would think a uh, CEO needs to have, and it's simple things. If you're a CEO, you need to have your hair straight or brushed in one or constantly in makeup or you cannot have tattoos or you cannot be divorced or whatever the cliches are. To those I say, fuck it all. Yeah? Yeah, let's celebrate us. However we choose to do that. Reach it, simple. <laughs> Karen knew she had a rebel on the call, so it's okay. So guys, in terms of the general path for me, I think I went through what it was like walking through Digicel, but I think I don't want to focus on that. I want us to think about uh, coming away from this discussion as individuals. I want us to think about what is your passion? What, what, is, what is your plan to give back to the universe? What is, what is your plan to help your neighbor? What is your plan to help that female in your work environment or at your school or your university, wherever you are? That person that you know needs that support, that leg up. What are we doing as individuals to make that change? That's what I want us to think about. Next slide. What's my motivation? I know we got to that slide, Carrie, yesterday, and I was like, let me just figure out what I'll walk through. Well, first and foremost is my son. Yeah, that's my primary motivation for everything that I do in life, but he's only been around for five years. So obviously there must have been motivation before that. Um, for me, as I mentioned, it's just important to know that I'm helping people. It doesn't really matter how I help. Yesterday, I went to get food, for example. There was this young man standing outside, and he was trying to sell fruit because he's helping himself to go to school. Yes, I gave him $25. I took his name and his number because I wanted to speak to his parents to find out what can I do to help? Because your, your son, who is only 14, he's, he's outside selling fruits and pretty much begging for, for help. 
and it's small things like that 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 helps us as individuals to know we're on the right path. It might sound simple, but it's things like that we need to start thinking about. Yeah, uh, obviously spirituality is important to me, like having my crown chakra, my root chakra, my sacral chakra, my love chakra, all these things need to be aligned. Well, the aim is to have them aligned because they're never aligned. So that's why we have to continuously work on how we interact with people, how we interchange what we do, who we do it with, and how do we love? Because that's important as well. As women in the, in the work environment, you're often tested to not be emotional. And I don't believe that. I think women make exceptional leaders because we're able to balance so many things at the same time, being a mom, being a business owner, going to school, um, accommodating being an auntie and having to babysit for the sister sometime. We do so many things seamlessly. And um, I firmly believe that my gut has never failed me. And it's not that you have to continuously lead with emotion because if you're watching your PL and your figures say you're adverse, your emotion won't fix that. Yeah, but I'm referring to life-changing things that where you have to trust yourself to know that you're making the right decision. Yeah. Uh, next slide, Shania. Yes, as I mentioned, I firmly believe that there's always a path that needs to be established for that next female, that next person. And it's, I'm sorry to be biased to females, but I think men had centuries of a lead in front of us and we don't need to apologize for helping assist out. So on the ground in Grenada, there's a few things that I get involved with. Uh, there's a few secondary school programs where we focus on mentorships and scholarships for young females. Um, even in my work environment here, just if there's someone who wants to get to that next level education or just understanding life in general, um, I get on board with that as well. Um, and in my community, because it's important to be involved in your community, because the formative part of your years was heavily, years, sorry, was heavily dependent on that neighbor or the lady down the street or however your neighborhood is set up. So it's important that when you're in a position to help, and it doesn't have to be financial, we need to remember that there's more than one way we can help. Yeah, so I, I just thought of another example. When I was finished with college, I remember there was a, a neighbor, not as, uh, I don't wanna say privileged, but uh, she was challenged to provide for her two daughters. Uh, one had just finished secondary school. She did really well. I think she got like six or seven subjects and she wanted to go to college. Around that, I just started working. I was probably like 18 or 19. And I was pulling in those big paychecks for probably a thousand dollars. I don't know what it was, but it was a lot to me then. And uh, the one of the daughters wanted to go to college, and the mom couldn't afford. And I was like, "It's there's nothing wrong." I was nineteen. Like, what does a nineteen-year-old need? There's no major stock investment you're thinking about at nineteen. So there was nothing wrong with me sacrificing half of my pay paycheck to ensure she had bus fee, bus fare, whatever it was. And then I gave her my books. So she ended up doing the same things I did in college, just sociology, economics, French and history. It's not what she wanted to do, but as even at 19, I was explaining to her, listen, like these subjects will have no relevance in 2095. Yeah. like. <laughs> No offense, I always speak about education in that matter because I think the certifications, it's for the rest of the world. It has nothing to do with you, the individual. Yeah, so um, I explained to her, like, just do them. Like, I'm paying for it, it's okay. Like, if you get past this and you figure there's another path, this will help you get to that next class. Yeah, so it's, it's things like that. 
uh, just creates a path. I'm asking everybody on everybody on this call, just think about how you're going to create a path, a road for your next female leader or leaders. Yeah. Do I have anything else on the next slide? Oh, what's next? So I mentioned Gem Consultancy, which is my company. And unlike Sayo, I haven't gotten to the point where I feel like I want to put down the Digicel button as yet. <laughs> and I'll definitely probably not be going into the medical field. Leap of faith there, my girl. That's why I love you. Um, but I think it's just more focus on my company and how do I give back more, getting involved in more voluntary work, helping the secondary schools and getting these kids ready because it's a different environment they're functioning now. And inside of the obvious challenges created by COVID, there's still the dysfunction of society that we need to help with. So the broken homes and whatnot. And I would sleep better at night knowing that I was able to help at least one person versus not doing it at all. So that's my next to continue on, I guess. Just stay on path, stay focused, and keep being me. Ladies, it's okay to have an opinion. I share mine all the time. People don't necessarily appreciate it, but I feel better knowing that I said how I felt. Yeah, so just keep being amazing and keep doing what you believe in. And for those of us who have not figured out that career, that's perfectly okay. You'll be fine, trust me. And find a way to speak to yourself. That's what I would say. So I put aside, I have a friend that speaks about nature bathing. So she pretty much immerses herself in the forest every morning for half an hour. That's a bit much, yeah? But I wake up and for half an hour, I will turn on some music, get into a fully relaxed mode, write down my aims for the day, what I'd like to do, what I'd like to focus on, what did I think about myself yesterday, areas I need to work on improving. And I do that every morning and it helps me, yeah? Um, you wanna walk forward with your best face, your best step every single day. And the only way you can do that is by being prepared and keeping that mental health in check. And I think that's all for me, Kara, in terms of what I wanna share with everyone. And just thank you again for allowing us to be part of this conversation. Really appreciate it. It's an excellent platform for females to identify other mentors or other leaders or just regular people like myself and Sarah and Joe that they can reach out to. So I'll pass the baton over to you, Kara, so we can see what's next. Maybe there's another, another Soka artist coming. I don't know. Thank you so much, John. <laughs> this is a motto for Caribbean Women's Power Lunch. When women support each other, incredible things happen. I live by this, the brand lives by this, the platform lives by this. Um, we have to start supporting each other more. And this is one of the um, biggest missions when it comes to this platform. We want to be able to, you know, give back to our community. We want to be able to empower women. We want to be able to connect women. We want to celebrate women, especially women from the Caribbean. So this is a space that we have created to do just that. You guys are all very gifted and every single person has a different purpose. God does not give us all the same purpose. Every single person is different, unique and beautiful in their own way. And I just want you guys to know that that light that God has put inside of you is what will make you shine. Is that like once you tap into that little light and you find out what your purpose is and what you are meant to do, no one can stop you, nothing can stop you. That is your power. Thank you so much, Joanna. Thank you so much, Sayo. Um, again, you guys are amazing ladies. And I am very, very grateful that you took the time on a Sunday on your day off from being a boss babe CEO to spend it with us. Trevon, thank you so much. Um, this event was sponsored by Digicel Grenada. We could not have made this possible without Trevon and her team. Um, so thank you so much, ladies. <laughs> you guys check out Digicel. 
they're they're really good. So get your cell phone sorted, get your home, get everything sorted with digital. They're the way to go. Um, but again, thank you, ladies. I truly, truly appreciate um, you guys being here, and I'm sending you guys an immense amount of love and blessings um, to start your week.